The Starlight Lounge presents An Evening with the Progressive Box. The moon, yeah. That's Hugo, tickling the ivories. He just saved by bundling home and auto with Progressive. Gonna finally buy a ring for that gal of yours, Hugo? Send her my condolences. hi oh This next one's for you, too. There's a burglar in my heart. Thank you. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Discounts not available in all states or situations. Welcome to Life Transformation Radio. This show is all about life transformations and our journey from where we were to why we are doing what we are doing today. We will discuss the hiccups, the roller coasters, and the blood, sweat, and tears that has been poured out while discovering our purpose. It is all about our transformation. Here is your host, Sean Douglas. Hey, welcome, my friends, to another episode of Life Transformation Radio. I am your host, Master Resilience Implementer, TEDx Speaker, Performance Enhancement Expert, and Author, Sean Douglas. This show is currently heard in over 48 countries, such as the U.S., India, Canada, France, Australia, Panama, the UK, Ireland, Norway, Sweden, Japan, Malaysia. It's all over the place. So thank you to those who are listening to the show from around the world. Life Transformation Radio is all about our transformation. Here is where we tell the stories of why we're doing what we're doing. We highlight that transformational moment that changed our lives and how we use these to help transform others and elevate their lives as well. Now, you can listen to us every Wednesday live, first and third Fridays at 5.30 p.m. Eastern. So we are live every single Wednesday right here on Blog Talk Radio. We are live on the first and third Fridays at 5.30 p.m. Eastern as well. Now, Tuesdays and Thursdays, I host book launches, product launches, event launches. Something that someone is doing amazing in the world is highlighted on those two days. So if you know somebody, send me an email, Sean, S-E-A-N, Sean, at the Success Core, C O R P S, the Success Core.com. You can follow us on Facebook at Life Transformation Radio and join our community, Life Transformation Radio community. Subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Player FM, TuneIn, or Google Play Music app. You can subscribe, rate and review the show. Let us know how you're doing. You can subscribe anywhere you feel comfortable. My guest today is going to blow your mind. My guest is impactful amazing, motivational, inspirational. He has it all. And so if you have any questions for my guest, you can call in on the live show at 657-383-1109. Again, the number is 657-383-1109. So everyone, please help me welcome to the show, Jeremy Winger. What is up, my friend? How's it going, brother? I'm doing well. So, I, you know, I hate to, like, butcher people's names, man. It is, it is like, winger, right? <laughs> yeah, you actually got it right. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, man. That's what I'm saying. So, how you doing, man? How's today? It's May 30th at 5.32 p.m. on my end. Um, what's happening, man? What's going on in 2018? Man, so 2018 has been an absolute rocket ship, and it's just been humbling, and it's just because of the just the response of of when saying yes to something that has been been really just roaring in the inside of my heart for a long time and just waiting for the right time and just to see just to see the rate things are growing and the rate that uh, that things are uh, just being able to reach to the depths of people's hearts has just been just been tremendous. Dude, I love it, man. I love it. When I, you know, in 2018. I've lived my life every day by saying yes and figuring it out. Like that's my whole that's 2018 right. mission. You know, in 20, in 2016, I started this thing where like every year I'm going to, I'm going to think of something that's going to be, you know, whatever. So, you know, 2016 was, was becoming inspired. 2017 was my breakout year. This is the breakout year, you know, and that's the year. Oh. And last year I got my Ted talk, you know, which was amazing. A breakout, right? Hey, congratulations on that. Oh, thanks man. Uh, 2018, this is my transformational year. Like this is the year that everything, my business, my life, you know, relationship, everything about it, my money, everything just transforms. Right. I mean, it's just, you know, you've been doing this for, for, you know, however long, however many years, whatever. And everything is just starting to transform into what you want it to transform into. 
you know, and become what you've manifested it to be. So yeah, this is my transformational year. So um, it's been really great. Incredible. If you're ready to do this thing, man, let's do it. Locked and loaded, man. Let's do it. Sweet. So this episode is titled A Legacy Driven Life with Jeremy Winger. Jeremy has retained an entire decade of freedom at 25 years old from suicide and drug addiction. Surviving his father's murder at 18 years old, Jeremy forgave his killer and has helped countless with the message of forgiveness. Jeremy is the creator of Legacy Driven Life and SurvivorsCode.com to arm people with a mental and emotional fortitude to handle the impossible of life. He's been featured on iHeartRadio, Sustainable Success Radio uh, via Voice America, No Quit Living Podcast, and many, many other media outlets, podcasts. Uh, He's been everywhere. There's been no better time than now to equip companies with forgiveness from an individual perspective to enhance a business culture, decrease employee turnover time, and explode overall production from a place of what he calls soul wholeness. Now, you can contact him on facebook.com forward slash Jeremy R, and his last name is spelled W-E-N-G-E-R. You can look up the Facebook page, Legacy Driven Life page, and he's on LinkedIn. First name, last name, Jeremy Winger. Look him up on LinkedIn. The guy is not hard to find. Look him up. Connect with the guy and get your soul wholeness. So I got to ask you, man, what is your big why for what you do? Man, you're you're crushing it. Just reading that, I'm getting chills. What is your big why for what you do? The one thing that turned my life around is today is actually uh, May 7th, earlier this month that marked 10 years of when I contemplated suicide. And all the way to that point in my life, I never felt like anybody believed in me. My mother sacrificed a lot for me. And it took me a while to realize that because of the things that I was, I believed from my father, but from my dad. But one of the things that when I thought everyone turned their back on me, it was that Mm -hmm. person who came and just said, I believe in you and just, and actually, it was the example is what is what changed me around, but it's also my faith in Jesus Christ. That that mm-hmm. is the number one. Those are the number two things that truly combine together is that my goal is to just help people understand that someone believes in them and to be the person that I had 10 years ago because there's about 124 people a day successfully commit suicide that did not have that. Yeah. And that's lowballing it. Yeah. Yeah, man. You know, what's, what's ironic is that, um, 10 years ago, December 24th, um, I tried to take my life. 2008, wow. December 24th. We were too far apart. So ten, ten, 10 years for me too, man. And I kind of, um, hmm kind of didn't know um how i would feel you know this year i just i didn't i didn't know you know i'm like geez 10 years ago yeah man like how different is our like both (laughs) of us right i mean how different is our life 10 years later i honestly would not have i i never even thought of this like this world or realm was even possible i i i I never even thought that this playing field of mindset was even available to like people like me, like even yes. thinking this way. Yep. And cause I, I really, I, I value a really, I value a sharp mind and I have to stay on guard at all times. I like, just, just because it's the way I'm made. You know, a lot of people yep. get irritated or impatient with that because of like have the maintenance that goes on that you have to maintain your thought life. And man, it was just, um, it also, it, it taught me that even then that you have all these challenges, like these, these, uh, I guess you would uh, call them like, you just call them like mental showers instead of brain farts, you know, mental showers. And so right. <laughs> be able right. to, to maintain, maintain your thoughts, but in a way that those are also, that also is an illustration of your power as well. If you have a lot of stuff rushing through your mind, there's a reason for it. And then mm-hmm. you can keep up with it to have those boundaries. And so it was just, 
Um, man, it's it's been it's been I guess it's been nuts. It's been incredible, be right? To, yeah, just to even be able to get a, a hold on that and to understand that has been like extremely worth it for the past ten years, and yeah, it's been insane. Like it's just been breathless to even to to even have mental clarity, mental sanity is a gift. It really is. Yep. Yeah, man. Absolutely. You know, I, I just, I keep thinking, I'm like, man, you know, when you, when you said, I didn't think it was available. I didn't th- like, I, I'll tell you what, man, like I was, I used to say, I'm like, well, this is, this is all I'm good for. Like, I've, I've peaked. Yeah. This is all I'm ever going to be. You know, there's nothing else for me. Um, I'm not worthy. I'm not good enough. I'm not, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, yeah. I cannot believe that people now, I just, I don't, I don't know how people can, can even it, think it different. slaps me in the face every time because of how simple it is too. Mm-hmm. Like, golly. <laughs> yep. And it's just but decisions. It's, it's, but it's, it's decisions you make. Man, you're not kidding. Uh, you are not lying. Just being decisive on something and improvising. Yep. Like, yeah, I heard, really I heard something down that – Absolutely, man. I heard something the other day that said that most businesses fail. Like they looked at – like most businesses fail, like 80%, you know, whatever – like most most businesses fail because of inaction, or because they have contradicting yeah. information that they've read on the internet. Like most most <laughs> businesses. I wonder how most people. I wonder if they if they look at people, like how many people fail a year at anything, fail a test, fail like whatever, <laughs> because they're decisive. Like we were always told in school, like don't erase your answer, just stick with that answer because mostly it's right, you know. And then you come mm-hmm. to find out, you change some answers, you're like dang it, I freaking had it. Like I had it, you know, because you changed your answer. You were indecisive, you know. I would much rather fail moving doubt. forward, right? What's that? I said that just comes from self doubt, and you're absolutely right. Yeah. I'd rather do something and deal with it than right? have the like have the regret. I'd rather move forward and fail than <laughs> not take action because of like I didn't decide to. You know what I mean? I was just stuck. Right. That would suck. Absolutely. Yeah, man. So, so I love the why, love what you're doing, absolutely love what you're doing. So tell me, based, because this is what the show's about, right? And this is where we kind of get into deep waters and, you know, you never know where it's going to go. What is a yeah, transformational well. moment that literally changed your life and put you on the path to what you're doing right now? There's a lot. Um <laughs> yeah. Yep. Oh uh, man, I I would say, golly, you know, it's it was a um, there's a lot of them, but I want to I want to pay respect to somebody because, yeah, his name is Mr. Davis, and he, him and his, him and my mom, and I, there were. There was there was two months of back about ten years ago that when I had got arrested when I was arrested that night that's the night that I contemplated May sixth two thousand eight that from May sixth mm-hmm. all the way over to one a.m. on May seventh is the night that I contemplated suicide because I felt like a loser and I felt like I was never actually going to do anything besides fail and I had such a wrong relationship with failure. And, and it was a, um, it was where I, ha- like, where someone demonstrated to, like, the guy, his name was Anthony, who came and spoke to me that night and just uh, had a good sit-down talk with me and just breathed life into me. And that's when I went to the courthouse, and they gave me an option of going to inpatient uh, 12-step program in Mobile, Alabama, or doing the outpatient Bradford program there in Huntsville. And I thought about my mom. And all the sacrifice. She was a single parent raising three kids. I'm the oldest. And they were to have driven, she would have had to have driven me uh, back and forth twice a day, three times a week. That were on top of making sure that my brother and sister were taken care of. Or I can just get the heck out of Dodge and go down to Mobile. And I just had peace about that. I just knew that that was where I needed to go. So they, um, that's what they uh, ended up giving me the option of a month later. I was, uh, I mean, I was in the, the uh, Neves Davis center, the detention center there in Huntsville. And 
that's where a month later I ended up going down to the uh, the program down on, on Mobile off of New Man Road, ironically enough. And <laughs> <laughs> not even not even kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and it's off of Newman Road right down there in Mobile, Alabama, and it was just insane. So, and so I, uh, I ended up uh, meeting Mr. Davis. I mean, dude was a light-skinned dude. Jerry still had a Jerry curl. And I'm like, this is 10 years ago, not 30 years ago. And I love him. And he's just like, he talks to the raspy voice. has still had a gold tooth. I mean, just like, hey, man. And, <laughs> and he was <laughs> the most incredible man that he was my counselor. Ended up being there. I mean, dude was crack a joke and not even miss a beat. And, I mean, it was just awesome. You didn't even see it coming either. Just like inside the face. And you're like, wow, that's okay. And you just enjoyed the experience and right. moved on. And it was And it was something where he took the transformation from the heart and stacking those all three on together that when over those couple months, I would say over the span of four months, I went in, I was dedicated. I decided to do something. I made a commitment throughout these four months. that I would never give up no matter who or what came against me. And it still holds true mm. to this day. No matter what crap happens, I find a way to make it work. And Thank you. and that's where over those four months I went into rehab and remember that I was, I got arrested months later, was given that choice. Then a month later after that went into down to mobile. That's when I met Mr. Davis about seven weeks after that I left and went out on the job site, called, um, I went on the job site, went back working with my dad. And that's when I first time I ever stood up to my dad. And huh. uh, it, he came out an inch from punching me in the face because I wouldn't do something he told me to do. And he never did it again. Wow. And it was one of those things that I called Mr. Davis about three months after that happened. And he, never, he didn't work there anymore. <laughs> And I, I thought, what the heck? And he told me the story. He said, Jeremy, I actually, a month earlier, God told me to go take that job. And I dated it. And it was within days of when I made that decision to go down to Mobile. Huh. And then a month later, he said he was done. If that man wow. would not have been there. <laughs> so he just randomly left? left? He just it wasn't random. He just said he felt like he didn't need to be there anymore. He felt like what his, the way he needed to do there, because he, he had another business too. He went and got the job because he felt like something needed to be done there. He felt like a mission wow. needed to be accomplished. Like, I kid you not. And I'm just like, are you freaking kidding me? And wow. he said, uh, yeah. I mean, the dude does really well. He's not, he's not hurting for anything. And I'm just like, are you like, what? Mind blown? <laughs> and... I remember what he taught me how to follow that instinct and didn't even know it. Like that was what he was teaching me to follow. That when I was in that rehab and that's the same instinct that actually I followed to go see my dad the week before, uh, <laughs> the week wow. before um, I got the phone call uh, about my dad and being able to restore the relationship. But it all happened, mm -hmm. set a, a seed in, the, in those four months. All those things stacking together. Because yep. me sending out to my dad facilitated a healthy relationship that he couldn't push me around anymore. Hmm. And he eventually respected me as a man. And yeah. it was awesome. That's awesome. How long, did, how long did you guys have like with that relationship? It was about two years. Relationship? About two years? Yeah. It was about, mm -hmm. man. Well, he's, I mean, that's, that's what it's all about. I mean, you know, you're restoring relationships and then you're, you know, you're with each other. You know what I mean? Uh, repairing yeah. everything needs to be repaired, you know, whatever. And, uh, I just believe that everything happens for a reason. There's no coincidences. There's no circumstances. There's no, not, like everything is just a, div a divine plan. Everything is, 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 God's plan, everything. 
You know what I mean? We're like you're right where you are supposed to be in life, even right here on the show. You're right where you need to be at the perfect moment at the perfect time because somebody might be listening to the show and you transform their life. And you may never meet that person, but you never know. That's no, fine with me. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. As long as, as long as someone is able to grasp something or catch something. Yeah. Even if it's something I'm not even saying, it's how it's being said. I'm glad it's yeah. my day's mission to accomplish. Sure. So you... So you spent two years, right? And then tragedy happens. Are you are you comfortable sharing any of that? Yeah, I'm fine. So it is, uh, tragedy happens. Go ahead. It, so and... you get the phone call. That way. Oh, go ahead. No, no, no. I'm just setting the stage. So tragedy happens, and uh, you know what were you doing? What were you? Just in a normal day, I'm assuming. We we're halfway actually on the way to our family reunion. Um, because we we're actually going to Iowa for our annual get together and stopped in Illinois at a halfway point and had mm-hmm. woken up to a phone call from my grandma. And I thought it was really odd that she was calling me. I'm like, I'm, I hung up. I figured I'd see her in a couple of hours anyway. So I love her, but you woke me up click <laughs> and it's just uh Oops. yeah i'm just not a morning person at times i'm like i love you grandma but <laughs> All right. and and so when um, she called again i was just like golly grandma chill i'm gonna try to go back to sleep at least get like 30 minutes or an hour more of sleep and then call her back right. but wasn't able to um but because my mom actually got a phone call and she screamed and ran out of the room and it goes right over my head. I'm just like awkward or try to go back to sleep. And that's when, uh, could go back to sleep, got dressed, went down to the continental breakfast, what a blase blase. And was, was able to uh, listen to the voicemail that my grandma left me. And that's when she told me that my, my dad had been shot and, uh, that they found him in a certain condition that not, uh, was the standards were not there for an amateur. And so it was a, wow. it, yeah, it was a direct hit and they, uh, I haven't been able to meet the guy yet, but one of the things is that when I got that phone call, I reflected back about nine months. I mean, it was all of this happening in a split second, what I'm about to share. Mm-hmm. And within literally it was nine months prior to even going to see my dad a week, a week, uh, a week ago that time. And because this is on a Monday. I saw him on a press Thursday. And, and that's when I was just like, I, I, I remember being in church and God telling me that something unexpected was going to happen. And I was like, what are you talking about? And I didn't get any early details or anything, but I just brushed it off. I'm like, okay, whatever. But I knew inside of me that there was something driving me to even more to, to go and spend time with my dad. Just more, mm-hmm. I don't know what it was. It, it was something that, but my dad had been involved in so many different um, extracurricular activities that uh, mm-hmm. just that it comes down to the lifestyle that he was living. But he just, I mean, he was just in a, in a prostitute, drugs and guns, man. And it was just, he wasn't making smart decisions. Oh, wow. And, and so, yeah, that's, that's partially the reason why I didn't really tell my mom about the abuse that I was going through growing up as a kid, because that's what distracted me. And, right. and so, when it came down to it, he made a series of decisions that I was, um, I was able to impact him from a distance because you can love people with a 10 foot pole and just keep it between you the two and just don't whack him with it or hit him with it. Uh, sure. you're fine. <laughs> just like you just poke him, you leave him alone. But, right. but that's what from a distance. He, so he was able to see an example and, it was, uh, there was things that were being drawn out and changed. You could see in his lifestyle. I mean, most people from afar off could see it. That's, I mean, he just rubbed some people the wrong way. But when I got that call, I just, um, everything made sense. And I had closure. I didn't, I mean, I wasn't sad because I felt safe. Mm. And I felt grounded. 
because I poured my heart out. And did I, I lost count of how many times I cussed my dad out. I'm not even going to lie. Like, it was, whew. Like, if you, you know, put it, like, a second like, clip together, and you can probably, like, make a full-on, you know, um, oh, gosh. Um, dang it, one of those, a telegraph, or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yep. But, but anyways, it was, it was to a point where I remember all of that, that kept me grounded. All that happened within that split second of flashback, me just going through all of that, and I had peace. And I remember, um, I remember, I mean, there's a lot of things that to fill in the gaps, but um, I mean, all the supernatural cool stuff that happened to fill in the gaps. But when it, when I was, I was able to, like, because I actually went up to my grandmother's house and grandma's house, and it actually was supposed to stay in my dad's room that he grew up in. And that made it harder. And was able to spend time in prayer, was able to spend time in worship, and just to soak in the presence of God and the goodness of God, and was able to, that was the foundation to it. But I mean, I journaled. I called my friends, the people who would listen to me and not try, that would love me and not fix me. And yep. just as a support, I mean, I mean, I, even though I was in prayer and stuff, like these emotions came and I felt so hollow and empty that you can't, you cannot yell in the pillow that loud enough to, to try and like, because like be respectful of everyone in the house. And man, um, it was rough, but it was, it was, I got through it. It was possible and ended up uh, being able to stand up at the funeral and just share the story of how the restoration story. And right then and there, I had like, that's something that in prayer, I knew in my heart that I was supposed to share the story right from the get go that um, that now it was just like uh, forwarding it over the next six years. I mean, I was involved with different businesses, did really well. I was overseas as a missionary for, for a year and then moved up to Nashville. And I mean, it was just that lingering thought. And uh, this, uh, I was just waiting. I just, I knew what I, I knew it was in my heart, but I was just waiting for the right time. And right. to be yep. able to, to the person who, who when they found the guy i mean i i actually um yeah it was just i had to let the police do their job let's just say that <laughs> yeah yeah especially with the lifestyle that he was living so did they like yeah. catch convict like the whole process like all that they found him back in 2016 and right now he's going through the grand jury process oh wow still two years later Man, but I don't in the know. Meantime, I mean, yeah. I was just going to say, in the meantime, man, this has been being able to, on this journey, but I feel like I'm off, jumped off a cliff and I'm just in free flight and having a blast and on the journey to meet this guy face to face and just tell him that I've wiped his slate completely clean and I am fine with him. Like, I, I don't have any harm, like bitterness or any vengeance harbored inside of me. I, I It wouldn't do me any good and it would just like siphon and just, just like it, it would break down so many different areas of my life, siphon energy from everything and just, and just make you just, just brittle. And, and so now it's just on the, on the journey of being able to just to absolutely just pour my heart out to people and just to share with them what I've come through, but in a way that is able to now pour back into them to where they can find, they can get grounding and like and closure themselves even if they're in the midst of waiting and, and it's just been a, uh, it's a wild ride. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like it. It sounds like it. So you, you go through this, this, this transformational moment with Mr. Davis coming back mm-hmm. talking to your father and then tragedy happens I mean, where do you where do you go from there? I mean, do you do you regress back into addiction and suicide, or did that have oh, no. anything to do with? I mean, you know, what I'm like some people would be like, "Oh my gosh, my life again! Like I can't get anywhere, Fair and like I, I thought I was doing good." I mean, that would be most people's thoughts, I would think. But I mean, how did you how did you keep moving forward, even though, you know, because you talk about the mental and emotional fortitude to handle like the impossibles of life, right? I mean, how did you move forward? 
it's just been a series of mentors and father figures in my life. Yeah, it's of course my relationship with God, but when it comes to the people who played cornerstones in my life, like when I when my dad passed away, I mean he had a tree company for 18 years, and that's when I I mean that's where I got my start in business. And people are, I mean they would ask me nonstop, saying, "Jeremy, are you gonna take over his business, or whatever?" Because I mean I did everything in this company from HR. I did HR with this company. I was 13 years old. Didn't even know what it was, but that's what I was doing. Everything <laughs> with that with grunt nice. work because these 45 year old kids couldn't talk to each other, man. Like what? Right. And so, uh, but anyways. They, it, it ended up happening because of just different things that were going on, but um, ended up doing that with client sales, all the grunt work, of course, to operating the heavy equipment. I, mean, I was to operate a T-130 Bobcat at 14, and so it was my it was my go kart, and so it was a big old Bobcat. But doing all the stuff with the business, they asked me if I was going to take it over, but he was in so much debt that there was no point. And that's when I I just always been an entrepreneur at heart. I mean, I was selling skills in Starburst in middle school. And doing things with yard <laughs> work and stuff. And uh, where everything happened, I uh, ended up using some of my friend's equipment with my dad's equipment and started up my own lawn care thing. And eventually, uh, because of my background in knowing social media, and you know, and at that right. point, I mean, honestly, I just knew how to talk to people. And I was like, hey, it, it works. And so that's when I took my skills with being able to connect with people and just knowing just social media itself became a became an equity partner in a 13 year old landscaping company and awesome. at 18 years old yeah and it was really it was really cool because did their entire rebranding of social media uh well their their whole brand their uh, business categories and the services which would make the most money which is like the most efficient yep. and we just x and a 86 some services out um uh, focused on the good ones did a quarter over a quarter million in nine months and from and it was awesome and I mean, that was, it was an incredible time to be able to, to go into that. But then immediately I went right overseas to be a missionary. I was over there for uh, in South America for, uh, for a year. Wow. And, you went to South America? Yeah. yeah. How was that? Down there and, oh gosh, I'm going back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably going to move to Panama, the Panama Canal. I'm not even going to lie. <laughs> really? Yeah, man, I love it down there. That's cool. I mean, you don't really hear that, like, oh man, South America. Oh man, like there's so many. You're like, really? Are you sure? It's like South America. Really? <laughs> yeah, you know it's, I mean? it's, but, yeah, like you South never know, though, problem. right? Like, you never know. What? I should say, like you. I mean, there's some people. Like I know people that have gone into Belize as like a missionary to Belize. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, I think it's like right on the. Right on the um, right here, Guatemala or something like that, and they're like, "Oh my God, it's so amazing! We're doing God's work. It's so incredible, it's so incredible!" And I'm just like, <laughs> "Really, Belize? Really? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, you know, when I, I think, think of like, like, yeah, like, I went to I went to Italy. You know what I mean? I went to Sweden. You know, like, I went to Austria. Yeah. I'm like, yes, that's awesome. And they'd be like, yeah, I went to. Oh, we didn't live like that. Uh, you know, Malaysia or something. You know, I'm like, like really? <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't no, think, so we didn't, you wouldn't we think not, that it was awesome. Right. No, it was it was fantastic. I mean, we lived, we were in Barranquilla, uh, which is about 30 minutes from the ocean, and we definitely, um, I mean, we definitely treat ourselves well. I mean, there are some people that have it in their heart to to test their limits. More power to them, but not me. Like, I'm I'm down there. I'm living comfortable. Like, I'm. I want to be able to have the emotion. Like I, if, God didn't tell me to do that. So they can do it. More power to them. They just, that's cool. Right. But for me, I, I mean, we were living in, uh, in, I mean, we were living in a nice suite. It was good. And but it was, uh, I mean, it had it just challenges with the weather and other stuff and the culture. But I mean, just it, it like anything else. And you know, but did we need to live in a, a dirt hut to learn humility? <laughs> no. <laughs> I appreciate the offer, but nah. <laughs> like, nah. Uh, <laughs> I told you to step on some t- Who cares? <laughs> you know, it would be cool though. Like, let's be a dirt hut, man. Like, I would. I don't know how I'd feel about this saying this, but like, I like to just go. You know, like a couple days in like the Amazon. You know what I mean? Like, just be surrounded yeah. by like true nature. 
like where yeah, everything year, can kill you, like bugs and <laughs> like everything can kill you, flowers. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's been like four days, right? Like okay, get my missionary on, and like if you're gonna go, if you're gonna go anywhere, you know what I mean? Like go somewhere that like everything can kill you, and then <laughs> you, you, you learn a little bit about yourself. <laughs> well, the thing is, like, a lot of people hear missionary, they hear sacrifice. It's like, how much can you really sacrifice, you know, to, to actually right. get your fix? You know, it's just like... If you are, like, oh in the gosh. Amazon, surrounded by everything that can... Like, you're the <laughs> lowest possible life form Dude, of the just food go chain. to Antarctica and will carry you away. Fuck that. <laughs> just go to the Antarctica, <laughs> go skinny dipping in the Antarctica, see how many minutes you last. Oh, like, <laughs> Jesus. Right? Awesome. <laughs> so, so changing gears, man. So um, tell everybody, like, you know, so what you do, you know, because because that transformational moment pushes you into now. You know, why right. legacy driven life? You know, why, you know, why are you doing the things that you do now with Survivor's Code and, you know, you're on podcasts and everything. You know, tell everybody what you do and and uh, you know what 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 you're doing today. Yeah, the biggest thing is when it comes to legacy driven life, being able to just raise the awareness right now. And to help people understand the purpose and where forgiveness plays a part, even if they're not aware of it. Because forgiveness plays a part in our lives like water does our bodies. And sometimes we're not even aware that you know, drinking a lot of water will actually help you compared to all the energy drinks that you're drinking. And you know, it's just kind of like a common sense thing. But sometimes we just overlook it or overcomplicate things. So the goal is to unravel all of this, unravel the mystery of forgiveness and then be able to translate it into practical daily disciplines and when it comes down to the disciplines be able to give people systems in place of that and so when it comes to the survivor code that's the course that's going to be coming out here soon uh, and it's been it's been to the point where being able to under like take the understanding of what it's like for somebody who's gone through it and knows the freedom and lives in the freedom to be able to bring that to somebody it's, it's made by the people and for the people for a reason. And because there are other people that are coming together and being able to, to unite on this. And so it's like, when it comes to the survivor code, when it comes to legacy driven life, that is, that is something that I want to be able to not, not just put in another automation in place, which they do have their, their practicalities to it, but an, an automation or a streamlining process for someone's business is going to become a burden if there's no joy mm-hmm. and right when yep. there's no joy how in the heck it's like that's the oil in the engine that's the lifeblood but that's where forgiveness facilitates that because it brings understanding and wraps the things around wraps your mind around the things that really need to be understood but also some of the things that need to play out and understand sometimes it's not it's not your fault you know things happen Oh yeah, definitely. You know, and I and I think that emotional intelligence and forgiveness and you know acknowledging that you know I cannot control everything and and nothing right. like not everything has to be my fault. Yeah, you know, I love that you just said that because I literally got to do a conversation with somebody. I'm like, dude, it's not like it's not all about you. It's yeah. just not. <laughs> and, and I don't mean that it's not all about you. Like when you're on stage speaking. You know, quit t- freaking telling the crowd about how freaking awesome you are. Like, talk about them. You know what I mean? It's not all about you. But I also mean that you don't always have to be sorry. You don't always have to think that you mess everything up or you always have to be saying, like, um, you, you know, like they did me wrong and, it, and, and, and I'm the victim. And I'm the, you know, what I'm like it, it, it's not always about you. You know, so when you forgive right. people, it's like you take back that power. Like, I mean, I've had, I'm, I'm married, been married for 10 years. And, and there's still some times where I think back, you know, like we'll be talking about memories and different things. Like there's things that I'm like, man, I really said something stupid that day. Or, man, this one girl that I was seeing at the time, you know, she really broke my heart. You know, it was like, that doesn't even matter. Like why? I mean, th- the thoughts are going to come, but accept them, acknowledge them and move on. You know, like yeah, to be layout. stuck on stuff like that, right? To be stuck on stuff like that is just, it's pointless anymore. 
Because any, well, any when, worry that you give it and any energy is not going to change the fact of how you feel or what happened. You know, it's interesting because forgiveness can either turn your imagination into reality or fantasy. Mm-hmm. And when you're able to let go of the history, disconnect it from who you are, and understand it's what you did is based on what you knew at the time because you had to be decisive. I mean, time wasn't waiting, so you had to do something. And like it's it's so it's a it's honestly counterintuitive because the what you focus on it is where your energy goes to. And it's proven. And it's yep. I mean, not only is it scientifically proven, but it's also yep. biblically written that yep. what you think is exactly what you become. And it's insane to think that when you, when you're our words, even in our jokes, you know, we talk about, you know, joking doesn't matter, but then we talk about the affirmations. Yeah. Okay. Like, give me a break. Like we talked about the different stuff that are our words that don't have any power, but we just like, we completely glaze over our conversations with people. It's not talking about being the confession police, but it's talking about being real and saying like, man, you know, and, and not and not being afraid of your emotions. Let that let, let those things out. <laughs> hey, don't bottle them up. But also, when you say something and with a, a but at the end of it, it completely null and voids it. So just put the negative mm. on the front of it. Yep. Burst it. Yep. I'll do a Sean exactly. Michael. I'll just freaking. <laughs> you said that. I was like, boom. Yep. <laughs> But people stay there, man. They plant their mailbox, and they 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 just say, you know, this is my lot in life. This is all I'm. This is all I'm good for. That's it. Yeah. This that's is where that's I stay. When you don't lose clues. Clues. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. Dude, nailed it. I love it. So, life transformation radio listeners, if you're listening, the lines are open. My team is standing by. If you have any questions for Jeremy. The number is 657-383-1109. Again, the number is 657-383-1109. Would love to get your thoughts and any questions. Uh, My team is standing by to feed out any of the trolls that want to pop in and try to get on the show and say stupid stuff. I was going to love those guys. Yeah. So... So yeah, man. Um, so so I'm wondering, you know, you, you mentioned a couple of people earlier, uh, like Mr. Davis and a couple other people. Um, who are your biggest influencers? Either you know, oh, any geez. any point yeah. in time. Man, of course, you know Jesus Christ is gonna be number one. But when it comes to everyday examples, John Maxwell is huge. John Maxwell, Eric Thomas. Um, okay. You've got yeah. Eric Thomas, man, that dude's like a freaking lion when he talks. Like, it's ridiculous. <laughs> man, yeah. like, he roars every time he talks, man. I love it. Yeah. And uh, there's this uh, new guy that I found, actually, and um, he – I have to get his name, but just somebody who came, I came across. And, but, um, but then you've got um, – you've got – oh, my gosh. I mean, dude, I got to give a shout-out to Colby K, man. And I do have to go. Oh, like, dude, I, I was just speaking with him <laughs> on stage. Him and Dom Fawcett are some people that I'm connected with personally, and those two guys are freaking rock stars. Like, I, are you going to melt down in the desert? Um, that's kind of the idea. That's what I'm planning on. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could, man. I got some. Uh, I got some military duties. Um, that are going to preclude me from going. And I'm also speaking at an event literally like the day before. And between oh, speaking and airplane. traveling and everything else. Huh? <laughs> it's called an airplane. It's fun. Or a helicopter. Oh, I know. Right? <laughs> so, so I'd be literally traveling like like I would be speaking like the first day. I'd be speaking and then I'd be traveling to make like the second – like it would just be a lot. Uh, I've got some military stuff going on around the same time. But um, – but yeah, man, I spoke in St. George, Utah, uh, as one of the main stage speakers, as a keynote speaker with Colby. Um, he was like the ending speaker. He did like two of them. He did like a breakout session and you know, closed it out. The for, the, for, the, for what? What was the name of that one? It started with a C, didn't it? The, no, no, it was the Outliers uh, podcast. Festival. Outlier, that's what it was. 
Yeah, uh, Ever Gonzalez is the organizer for that event, and they're doing one in L.A. like September, October, something like that. It was a, it was a great event, great, great, great event. Uh, my buddy Jeremy Slate and I, um, he owns the uh, Major brand. Yeah, oh, yeah, dude, my, that's that's my dude, that's my boy. Uh, we're, we talk about all the time. Uh, and a half ago. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy's awesome. Uh, yeah, so he flew in and. We met in Vegas, and then we rented a car and drove from Vegas to St. George. Literally, it's $400 cheaper to do it that way rather than just a flight into St. George. It's freaking crazy. And, um, yeah, yeah, so Jeremy Slate and I and Colby and Tyler Harris and uh, a bunch of other freaking amazing people um, were all there, man. I haven't had the chance to talk about the but I had plan on it. That dude's awesome. Yeah, Yeah, those are definitely influences for me. Definitely. Colby. um, Dude, when that guy comes up to you and says, you did an amazing job, dude. Loved your talk. I'm like, oh, my life's complete. He thinks we're talking about <laughs> <laughs> you know? Man, Colby's a servant, With man. Colby that's, Gates, that's his man, heart. Talk is awesome. You know what I mean? Dude. You, you, it, it, that's the greatest affirmation, man, I'm telling you. Yeah, he's awesome. definitely got a servant's heart, man, which is that's what I love and respect about him. Huge. Yeah, huge, man. So, so where are you headed now, man? Any new adventures, businesses, family? What's the rest of 2018 look like for you? Well, you know, it's kind of on the back end of stuff. It's kind of what we were talking about earlier is that, you know, yeah. there's the agency back end of some stuff when it comes to artificial intelligence. Taking everything from the background, when it comes to understanding people, I thought to myself, I was like, the, one of the biggest things that people don't keep their New Year's resolutions is because of accountability, right? And I also uh, thought to myself, you know, Number one, yeah. I'd say number one. Yeah, at least one of the top ten. <laughs> yeah, so the there's studies three. done on this. Yeah, and that's the thing, too, is the same parallel when it comes to business owners. The reason why they don't keep their year, New Year's resolution, like the new year of their resolution consistently is because sometimes they don't have systems in place, but also they just yep. don't they don't know what to really – established and so that's where the artificial intelligence comes into play and to be able to help them when it comes to chatbots and understanding people and creating a really nice experience for the front end growth and the evolution of their customers so it's been great um family's been growing uh like just with brother and sister you know there's no kids Mm -hmm. or anything so but (laughs) but (laughs) just been great friends of i mean been making incredible friends across the board across the nation across the world and i'm going out to an event in vegas probably in september or so i've I've nailed on the dates for it i'm going out to speak but yeah that and some other events in the meantime and so i have some bigger projects when it comes down to and it's uh it's exciting it's just being able to not only to be able to heal broken hearts but also to bring the systems in place to, to to be able to sustain it is key. Right. Yeah, man. So, um, you know, so I've built three businesses uh, while serving on active duty military orders. And, um, mm. you know, I got three years to go before I exit the military with a full year, 20 year career. Been speaking, you know, for many years. I was a drill instructor from 09 to 13. And then um, 2014 became a master resilience trainer for the, for the Air Force. 2015 Incredible. started my professional speaking career. So I've been doing it for for three years. I'm booked at, you know, 35 to 5,500 religiously. Um, been booked for for 8K, you know, for a speech. Um, why would I work with you if somebody, you know, if if I'm an entrepreneur, speaker, and a business owner? I mean, what what what's the draw? I mean, I know what it is, but tell everybody what's the draw to working with you specifically transparency and communication love it love that <laughs> word and transparency that's, i love that you don't hold anything back though like i love that you're like dude it's this and you're not oh, afraid yeah, to be like shut up it's, shut up it's this is no <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean like like you're like dude shut up i know it's this okay just stop you know and this is why you know what i mean I gotta like, well, that it, seriously <laughs> yeah like sometimes it's like like some coaches that I, that i meet and that's why i, I just ugh, like all the facebook coaches and like all all that stuff, I'm just like, golly, man. Dude, I literally was at I was an event. The post I was making. <laughs> yeah, right? Dude, I was at an event a couple a couple of months ago, you know, like earlier in the year. I was like, like right around February, March. I was speaking at an event, crushed it, standing ovation. Um, 
this guy comes up to me and he's like, dude, I love your talk. I'm like, oh, it's cool, man. Thanks. He's like, I'd love to get your book on stage. I'm like, yeah, dude, let's do that. You know, he's like, yeah. So like, uh, you know, I, I, I'm a business owner. Um, you know, I help speakers get booked. I'm like, that's awesome. How many speak, how many speeches have you done? He's like, well, I don't speak. I get people booked. I'm like, oh, um, how many contracts have you closed? How many, and I started asking him like the business questions and he's like, well, well, I mean, I, I just get the stages. I mean, Okay, how old are you? <laughs> like, he said he was like 23 or 24. He's 23 or 24. I was like, dude, explain to me if you've never been booked to speak. If you, like, how do you get me booked? To, yeah. Like, how does that happen? Like, like well, it's interesting, I'm booked man. 20 to 25 times a year while serving on, in the military, full time, active right. duty. And I'm still booked 20 to 25 times a year. And this year alone, I've been on like 24, 25 podcasts. Last year was like 450 right. podcasts. I was on this year. I'm already at like 23, 24 podcasts. Like how can you like scale what I'm already doing? He's like, well, right. I mean, I, I just get you booked. I'm like, you know what? I, I have an idea. <laughs> like, you know, like you can't tell me, like you can't, you have no process, no strategies, whatever. Like, like what yeah. is the di- but there's all these like 21 and 22 year old like I'm a business owner. What business do you have? Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean this is what I do. No, no, no. What business do you have? Like what do you do? Like you know right. what I'm saying? What is oh, your man. value? Like yeah, what makes dude, you like, what different, is your- dude? I asked him what his value a- proposition was. He asked me what is that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Yeah, dude, I was like I was like what's your value proposition? He's like what do you mean? Like what do you, what do you first of all? I know for a fact that you're not a Gary V fan because that's what all Gary V talks about is value proposition. Like every other word on the prop is either value or proposition no- or value proposition, right? Like, so you don't watch Gary V, so I know you're not, right? You're not being influenced by Gary V. I'm like, what is your value proposition? Like, what is it that you bring, right? Like, so, so what is it that you do more of than anybody else, and how are you different than everybody else? Like, what is your value proposition? He's like, well, I just I get you booked. Like, that's all he said. I was like, oh god. Yeah, it's just sad, man, and that's why it's like I had a, um, I had a, tw- I, I'm, a I'm 26, man, but it's like, I, I, I feel like I've been through my like, experience of like a 40 year old somewhat, and yeah. but it's been eh, kind of, I'm kind of overshooting, maybe of a 28 year old, but, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but one of the things like this, this kid hits me up in the in a message, I get these all the time too. I'm like, so like these are qualifying questions that I have whenever someone wants to connect with me on Facebook. And so, because I'm very particular about that. I mean, if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn to see what sticks, then go for it. You know, but when it comes to Facebook, uh -uh. and so like I, I'll ask them and say, Hey man, awesome. Thank you so much for volunteering and wanting to be on my podcast and thinking that you can bring me value. Appreciate that. How do we connect? And awesome. all of a sudden he's just like, well, man, I, uh, <clears throat> you know, in that accent is how he wrote. And he's like, well, man, <clears throat> I, uh, you know, um, I found you and just felt like I saw your show and just, man, I just wanted, wanted just to come on. I feel like I can add on the entrepreneur mindset. I'm like, oh God, dude, you're great. This is getting better. And so I said, awesome. So what's your story? Send it to me in a 60 second time uh, voice note right now. He still hasn't sent it. And so, oh boy. and this was last week. Oh boy. <laughs> I was like, dude, I don't know how many times I get that email. Hey, saw your show. I'd love to be a guest. Um, let me know if it's of interest. It's not because you didn't tell me anything. Like, or <laughs> exactly. I get a really long pitch. Like, long <laughs> pitch. Like, geez, <laughs> almighty, dude. If, you, if I have to read like a paragraph plus six, like, I'm just, <laughs> dude, just tell me what I want to know. Like, hey, man, I heard this episode. Like, literally, I, I speak at, at podcasting conferences all the time. My whole thing to them, my message to them is, here's what you do. Hey, Jeremy, heard your show. I loved the episode with this person who talked about boom, 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 boom. I loved yeah. it so much that I thought that I could be on your show because I, too, can speak about this. But here's my twist. Or I love that the topics of this, and I can contribute to your audience by giving this. I have a free PDF. I have a free download. I have a, you know, whatever. I can give to the audience. It's free. I'll give them five books. I'll, you know, whatever. Here's what I would do for your audience. If it's any of interest to you, here's my email address, phone number, Facebook, LinkedIn, Snapagram, and Instachat. Something. <laughs> something. Like, what were those something. two again? Like, 
<laughs> right? Like that's what it should be. Like love the show, heard an episode, right? Because right? most people don't even listen to the show. Well, man, like you, you do more than I do. Then, <laughs> like, like I'm like I grew my like I don't even I don't even do a quarter of that. I just honestly, I probably sent a par like I just sent a paragraph and a half max. And you know, a good little humor in there, and connect with them, and just ask for uh, like, just really be able to file it down to like a sentence or two. And if that, if they're interested, then awesome. Let's get on a call, dig down a little bit deeper, brainstorm next. Yeah. And dude, I leave that no like, reason to say no. Like I oh, literally yeah, like, hurt hurt this and episode and strokes. this episode. Yeah, dude. Yeah. And so, and that's, that's how, and so that's up. how I'm booked on so many podcasts because I leave them no question. Like, I've heard your show. This is why I'm a fit for your show. Like, you know, like because I look at it as if I'm gonna have somebody like I had you on the show right today, and, and there's reasons why because we already talked. You have an incredible story. Mm-hmm. I love what you're doing. I love your mission. Like, I love everything about what's happening. Right. So, gotcha. so we have these conversations, and I said, okay, if I want Jeremy to be on my show, what am I looking for? It's these four or five things. Awesome. Let me put that into an email template, and anytime I want to yep. get on a show, let me just email that template out, fill in the blanks, and boom, I'm good to go. You see what I'm saying? Yep. But people don't even do that. They're just like – because my next question is, have you heard my show? No. Then how do you know you're even fit for it? If you've <laughs> never heard an episode, how do you even know? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And then I'll never get a I'll never get a phone call back because they just don't want to listen to the show. How is that it's a kicker me. Like it happens all the time on LinkedIn. I have people who's like, Hey, I have a fantastic opportunity for you. Yep. And after looking down your profile, think you're a fit. I'm like, Great, what did you read? I said, Fantastic. Like summarize my my profile for me. I just want to see if they're actually yep. like just for the kicks and giggles. And and I'm just I, like, Awesome. That's like how do you generate any leads again? Right. <laughs> so, I don't even, so I don't even I, entertain their question. Yeah. Oh my god. So check this out. Check this out. So I am literally like looking at your Facebook profile as we speak. Okay. As we speak, mm-hmm. I'm looking at your your profile. So if I search you, it just says Thrive Global, right? So as I look at your profile, like under your intro, it says. The forgiveness mechanic, contagious speaker, suicide survivor turned titan, 10 years running. Boom. Founder at Legacy Driven Life. You're single. Like all this stuff, right? Here's what pisses me off, dude. Here's what pisses me off. I send a message. Hey, Jeremy, how's it going? Love to connect with you. Jeremy says, hey, man, love to connect with you too, man. What's up? Hi, Jeremy. Hope you're having a great day. What do you do? Mother. It's on the Facebook page. <laughs> it's there. It's like exactly what I do. Like, I, and I message them. To, I message them back like thumbs in anger <laughs> on my phone. Like thumbs are well, in and anger. And that's the thing. Like for me, I have to go and research you so that way I can frame the conversation properly. Right, but but not a people do that. And I, and I ask them like, what do you mean? What do I do? It's all through my Facebook page. It sounds like you don't want to talk. No, bro. I'm kind of irritated that you didn't do your research. It literally says, speaker, founder. I offer life transformation skills. I'm a TEDx speaker. My picture is me on the TEDx stage. Like, I don't understand, right? And then on yours, it says, legacy driven podcast because, like, Joshua Berglund was on your show. Joshua Berglund is amazing. He was on my show. Love Joshua Berglund. He's awesome. Him and I spoke on stage uh, in Vegas in January. Dream come true. Oh, Got cool. Pink in Vegas. Dream come true. Right, that's where I met Joshua Berglund. Dude is amazing. That's I have awesome. his. I, I literally, I literally have his his freaking phone number. Like I can text him anytime. Dude's legit. Yeah, he's a, if he's I said, an awesome guy. I said, oh, you have a podcast. Oh well, and and I didn't say anything that I just said. He's like, oh, I see you have a podcast. Love to be a guest. Like I <laughs> like get. I come through his computer and smack you. You know, Since like, like <laughs> just, ooh, that pisses me off, dude. Pisses me off. I'm like, you can't take five minutes and literally read my profile. Well, anyway. it just goes to show who's like, who actually takes the time and who values you. Because if they don't, they're just in it for the, in it for them, and that's not something yep. you want. And and that's Absolutely. the biggest thing is that people not being in a in a desperate mindset or just in a desperate state of mind. Is that when you're not in that, you choose, and the quality is higher. And who cares about the quantity at times, man? You can make so much 
great content out of a good quality interview that yep. would surpass. I mean, why why have a hundred pennies when you can have one one hundred dollar bill? Just kidding. See, mm-hmm. missed, I want to see if you actually caught that. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but no, it's a. Like, I mean, honestly, that's kind of like that's kind of my thinking. Is like, would I rather have a hundred pennies or one single one hundred dollar bill? What do you think the answer is going to be? <laughs> like, oh, yeah, so. I do. Yeah. So in other words, the other question is like, would you have a dollar or a hundred bucks? You know, it's like, duh. And so, but when it goes down to being people like grabbing at straws, they're dealing with a hundred pennies, not one single dollar bill. Because right. you have all these idiotic, four, four stupid quarters. things that are going on. Yeah. It's just it's stupid. You know yeah. They're playing yeah. small. Yeah. Yep. And so dude, when, this is, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say that whenever you, when you're, when you're focused on the experience for someone, like for me, numbers numbers help me sell. Like I don't I don't like if the numbers don't make sense, then it doesn't make sense. Like nice. there's no point. Yeah, and it's like if, it's just it's all about creating a good experience for someone and helping them actually on that that'll actually solve their solve their issue instead of you just trying to get something around because you only you can only do that for so long, you know, and it does catch up. Absolutely, man. <laughs> so, dude. uh this is the point of the show as we close. Shameless plug moment. You can plug a friend, quote, websites, Facebook products, give a shout out, whatever you want. This is your moment to shamelessly plug. Go. Man, if anybody wants to go and, you know, when it comes down to, to talking about all these different things, I want people to get involved. They can go to legacydriven.live. And we've put together some things that are for just for people. The pre-registration part of it for the course that has been actually kind of running behind, but we're getting it out. And when it comes down to helping them on their under their heart issues, man, it's something that I want people to understand that it's possible that they can. Mm-hmm. And if that's not something that for that side of it, if they want to need something that's in their in their business for their systems. Let's talk about right. uh, automation, artificial intelligence. That way they can actually get to the point to breathe and to be able to take that moment back. And for, because when you make time, it makes time for that too. And so both have a very, a dual, dual place in that. And so that's where we can go and get connected to legacydriven.live for that, but also the chatbot.social and they can go there and get connected. We're revamping some of the stuff for the chatbot side of it, but it's for the practical side of it, but also the emotional side. They both play a part. Both are very important. But when it comes down to it, you have to have boundaries, personal boundaries in your soul, but also systems in your business to facilitate the growth for each. Yeah. I love it, dude. Love your mission. Love what you do. And, uh, you know, I just hope that uh, the 2018, the rest of 2018 is the best ever. So as we wrap up, can you deliver your best nugget of knowledge that will motivate, transcend, and inspire someone to take action? 124. Hmm. 124 is the number of people that is an extreme low ball that successfully kill themselves every day. You multiply that by five, and those are the people that attempt that are not successful. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's right over 6,000 people a day. And, oh, well, sorry. I mean, just doing the math. There's every. My math's way off on that, but anyways, there's a <laughs> there's a lot of people that attempt suicide daily. There's about 6,200 people that try it every single day. When it comes down to being able to make a difference into people's lives, it doesn't matter about the bigger vision right now. That'll that'll be achieved, but just the person in front of you is what makes is what's going to make the difference. It's an old cliche saying that to the world you may just be one person, but to the to one person you may be the world. And just think about that metaphor, how, what it illustrates right? and what it really takes. And if what you're doing right now is keeping you from the time to be able to do that, make mm-hmm. that adjustment because there are lives that could truly be at stake. Boom. You never know what people are battling with. You never know what people are struggling with. Yeah. You just never know. I totally love butchered it. that math, by the way. 
twenty. Yeah, six hundred and twenty yeah. people. Yeah. So dude, man, thank you so much for coming on the show. Love what you're doing. Love the podcast and the guests that you've had on there. Dude, it's raw, it's real, it's authentic, it's transparent. Love the conversations that you have on there. Um Dude, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. I really appreciate your time. Hey, dude, I, I just appreciate our friendship, man. I'm excited for the things that are about to happen for you 2018 oh, yeah. and just seeing the explosive things that we can do together, man. I'm, I'm pumped. Dude, absolutely, man. I see, like, great, great things happening for you and I, man. Um, you know, I've always said, you know, when, when you when – you, are fully transparent and fully stepping into what is created for you, man, the doors are swinging open that nobody can close. So that's the truth. So yeah, man, like I said, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being on the show. Amazing content, amazing guest. I just really appreciate it. Well, man, you're an incredible host. I appreciate the opportunity. (laughs) Thanks, man. So life transformation radio listeners, another amazing guest, another impactful episode of anything that Jeremy has talked about today, has resonated with you. Find him on Facebook. Go to the Legacy Driven Life page. Go to survivorscode.com, legacydriven.life. Find him on LinkedIn. He is not hard to find. He is as real as it gets. The dude is legit. Get a hold of him. Contact him. He's going to take you to the next level in your Legacy Driven Life. As we close, I always say, live your brand. Find opportunities every day to live out the values that you hold deep in your heart. And I call that living your brand. Subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, Player FM, TuneIn, and the Google Play Music app. Please leave us a review. Let us know how we did today. And until next episode, have a great night. Skydiving. This is amazing. Yeah, but you know what else is amazing? An iPhone 6S for just 49 bucks at Metro. Really? Imagine streaming all the way down with that amazing camera. I'm switching. That's smart. You know what else is smart? Parachutes. Woo! Switch to Metro and get an amazing iPhone 6S for only 49 bucks. Metro by T-Mobile. Phone offer requires port in of number not currently active on T-Mobile network or active on Metro in past 90 days. See store for details and terms and conditions. Skydiving. This is amazing. Yeah, but you know what else is amazing? An iPhone 6S for just 49 bucks at Metro. Really? Imagine streaming all the way down with that amazing camera. I'm switching. That's smart. You know what else is smart? Parachutes. Woo! Switch to Metro and get an amazing iPhone 6S for only 49 bucks. Metro by T-Mobile. Phone offer requires port in of number not currently active on T-Mobile network or active on Metro in past 90 days. See store for details and terms and conditions.